today on circuitwell.com I am going to show you the last project which I have been working on since quite a few weeks this is the third version of my LM399 reference board it's called 10399 because analog devices has launched a new reference ADR1399 it is a NAC folder to the LM399AH previous proven and tested reference this new ADR1399 it's similar package it has better specs compared to LM399 it can be used exactly the way you use LM399 this little board which I designed it consists of the reference itself a precision amplifier chip which produces from around 7 volt of this reference to 10 volts on the output and there is one really low noise LDO LT3042 is right here this board can be powered from a low noise power supply from a, from a linear power supply on this connector and it can also be backup power supply from a USB USB is primarily meant only for transport because you must understand these references are very very precise and they need to be continuously powered on switch off these references and turn them on again they develop a really really minor change in them so to avoid that the reference is supposed to be keep on all the time so I have designed this PCB in such a way that two power supply can be connected at the same time or one of them be connected this is the primary supply and this is the USB backup supply it consumes around 500 milliampere maximum so you can plug it on any USB devices it's nothing fancy not power delivery no nothing you supply directly normal 5 volt and this step up converter will convert this supply to the needed supply voltage for this circuitry circuit need the LT3042 is set to produce 15 volts and it needs supply 16 to 20 volts as you can see marked on this connector this PCB is have been well thought through and designed in such a way to minimize the thermal and mechanical stresses on the reference IC and you can see the cutouts have been made everywhere and even when you install this PCB in the enclosure you will not see any strains on the PCB itself when talking about enclosure this is the enclosure which I used it's a Hammond part it's a, it's a part from Hammond a Canadian company you can see on the back there's a USB power for backup only and it's also written here on the PCB itself 5 volt 500 MA noisy transport only and primary power supply need to be connected here 16 to 20 volts and maximum 150 milliampere this is the product name 10399 and in the front you can see it has three connections possible one is VZ this is the direct raw Zener output this is the ground and this is the 10 volt there is a small little window here which you cannot see when you power on and plug this board you will see there is a small little LED lit up under this PG it means that the regulator has generated power good signal and it is working properly there is a small little hole here so as you can see on this PCB there are two outputs possible you can have output of SMA or you can have this Vago connectors output it is supposed to connect to direct raw wires and you can have your own banana or any other cable which you prefer so second connector when you connect a SMA connector here you can mount a right angle SMA connector and you can have this SMA connector coming out right here you can drill your, yourself a hole itself and mount mount a SMA connector right there on the back side of the PCB there are markings there so I'll show you in a minute how the individual PCBs look like and how this board fit together if you want we can take it apart and see how does it look inside and how does it how well does it fit the board is out this is the front panel board and it's supposed to drill a 6 millimeter hole there and you will have a place for your SMA just to show you that you can have alternative connection there as well let's take out the board easy to take out same stuff same board as you seen on the back side of the board there's nothing much no component at all on the front I will just repeat one more time two input power connectors primarily to keep the board running all the time and using two diodes has been odd this guy gets supplied around 16 volt or 15.3 volts 
from USB or from the connector and it will apply. It is will generate a really low noise, very very low noise, 15 volts. You can read about the spec. I have also published a video comparing specification of this part. It is very very good spec part and very 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 well performing regulator. So it supplies 15 volts to this part and uh, to op-amp as well and they in the previous version there was no regulator on the board so this that so you supposed to supply a regulator supply there and this 15 volt gets supplied to this ic as well and you can see the resistor there all the resistors are already pre-mounted so you can select you can select the different reference voltages when you buy these references they are not very accurate they are stable but they are not very accurate so they are have a somewhat low initial accuracy so you're supposed to select depending on what or depending on what output this LM399 or ADR1399 generates you can select the different registers you can see two registers have been selected here one register is always available and you have to select one or two depending on your needs and it will output 10 volts accordingly after you calibrate it through this spot this spot is only one kilo ohm and primary adjustment is done by these registers which are fixed and this is just for very very fine adjustment so it does not affect the value or does not contribute quite a bit to the te temperature coefficient of the whole circuitry and it's very well designed I have this is the third version of my same board so it has been proven and tested it has been proven and tested there are multiple test points on the PCB you can make multiple measurements for example these test points for are the USB this is 16 volts input and this is 15 volts regulator regulated on this side you see 10 volt output same output goes to SMA as well and there is a VZ output going to the direct output of the Zener going to the connector. This is the power code LED and this shines through this little window and which you can see on the other side of the PCB. It's a four layer board you can see one, two and you cannot see three here but if I flip it you will be able to see four and three. It's a four layer PCB and very well designed, very well made and very well constructed. Let's take a closer look at the PCB. I'll zoom in. So it's very nicely assembled. By the way, this uh, PCB is uh, is done by GLC PCB. It's also partially assembled by them. All the SMD components, other than these connectors and this trim port and a USB connector, everything is done by GLC PCB. Video is also partially sponsored by them. I got support in getting these boards assembled and few of the parts, for example, this. ADR1399, this LT1001, I assembled myself and these two connectors as well. The rest of the PCB is very very nicely done by the JLC PCB and this video is partially sponsored by them. And on this panther you can see this is the serial number. This is also a feature of JLC PCB. You can have serial number on different PCBs. And this already embedded into cell screen. I can show you the other board. This was the same design file I sent them and it has 001. This is the first PCB, serial number 1. And this is the serial number two. They can have it QR code or data matrix. I choose into data matrix. And the PCB is having really nice quality, very good quality cell screen and everything else. I'm very well done. So this is how my setup looks like. On the top, you can see the reference board in an enclosure is connected to a small banana cable. And currently this banana cable is connected to my 34465A, my trusted 6.5 digit multimeter which I had for quite a few years. Nowadays I also have this DMM7510 which is a Keithley 7.5 digit multimeter. It is very very highly spec, very expensive unit and we will use both of this we will use both of the instruments to verify if the valve voltage which I calibrated there this reference against the 3458A 8.5 digit multimeter from key side and I do have access to that multimeter through one of my friend so we'll see how both of these instruments compare to this already pre-calibrated already pre-calibrated reference board of mine you can see small little LED PG LED is also green here so you can see this board is being powered from a linear power supply not connected to USB right now but USB can also be plugged you do not supposed to make measurements with the USB because USB is quite noisy and you will have bad measurements. This instrument can is right now set to 100 PLC and you can see it's reading 9.99999 and let's plug this instrument. 
other way around and let's clear the buffer it's also reading pretty close they are both exactly same and it tells us that instrument the both of them have calibration and this particular unit this particular little guy of ours it is holding on and you can see the temperature on the left side is 23 degrees and if you want we can verify a few other multimeters of my for example we'll verify this fluke 289 maybe we'll use this my u1273a let's set it to dc and plug it in this cable so 9.999 it is not a coincidence of course these old instruments are well within their spec and our little guy is supplying them exactly 10 volts and they are absolutely bang on spot on all three instruments exactly same with one another so i have one more instrument maybe it's plugged other way around you can see my really old u1272a is reading exactly 10 volts against this reference let's try one more multimeter this instrument take quite some time to boot is exactly reading 9.999 so all the four multimeters which have been tested they all read exactly the same value so everything is well within the spec i let this thing to be connected to my dmm7510 and collect some data over some time so that you can see how stability over times is uh, visible in this trend chart and we'll see how does it, how does it goes i will let it run for few minutes few hours and i'll show you the trends so i'll save the trends for the next video so that's it for this video so links to the product page on my website is available in the description you can visit my website www.circuitvery.com